Hi guys, so I went to this meeting at Cherry Hinton Leisure Centre last night and it was very, very interesting. There's some really good information in here. Um, as always, I'm just going to upload the unedited footage first. It's about an hour. Um, it's, it's worth watching it if you're interested in this thing because you get some good background information from Heather Williams and Steve Count's testimony is particularly interesting. So like I said, as always, I'm just putting up the unedited footage first and then I'm going to pluck out the, uh, you know, the individual clips um, for later. But I'm really, really stretched for time at the moment, so at the moment this is the best I can do. So bear with me, but for your own interest, it is worth just watching this, okay? As we discuss the atrocious proposals that are currently being put forward by those who claim to represent us at the City Council, down in South Camps and over at the County Council because as these speakers, and we're very pleased to have Steve Count, the uh, opposition leader from County, Heather Williams, the opposition leader from uh, South Cams, and we've got Shapur Mefta, who's the chair of the Mill Road Trade Association, and a number of people who are standing for City Council this year on an anti-congestion charge platform, myself included. Um, I remember distinctly when I decided that I was going to stand here in Cherry Hinton about nine months ago, and I met up with two excellent former councillors from this area, Eric Barrett-Payton and Christopher Howell. And they called me and they said to me, one thing you must remember, and it didn't come as a surprise to me, knowing the area as well I do, that Cherry Hinton is a village. And it is absolutely ridiculous that this scheme that is being implemented across Cambridge with no regard, and of course the, the feel and the impact will hit all of Cambridgeshire, but it hits this city and these areas most of all. People who will be charged every single time they drive off their driveway. And that's why we're so delighted to be holding an event today like this, where so much of the narrative and a lot of people I've seen on the social media have been complaining about the fact it's all been focused on broader Cambridgeshire. It's really important that here in the city we have our voice and we make very clear how we feel as the people most impacted by these decisions. So I'm going to hand over in a moment. We're just going to go down the panel and everyone's going to sort of introduce themselves. By way of introduction myself, my name is Zachary Marsh, and as I said, I'm the um, candidate here in Jerry Hinton for the Conservative Party. But we'll let everyone introduce themselves, okay? So... Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Adamuddin. I am standing in the City Council election from Romsey this year. I just stood a couple of years ago. I'll go back to Romsey. The reason is most important was the Mill Road Bridge I stood for. We lost the bridge, we fought really hard, and we did everything what we can do in our hands, but the last moment everything collapsed. We still have a little hope that we can stop these people going back in there to make a decision against the people will. So guys, that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm opposing the congestion charges. So anything which is going to destroy our city, I'm against that. Thank you. That was the hell of a Okay, my name is Shoko Mefta, and I'm a majority of people here. Yes. So I'm a chair for Miro Traders Association, and I've got my own shop in Miro. Can you hear me? Sorry. Loud. Stop it. I'm Shoko Mefta. I'm the chair for Miro Traders Association, and I've got my own business in Miro. And... Uh, I've been in Cambridge for a long time, and Cambridge is, I love Cambridge because I, I love it. It's a beautiful place to live, and they are trying to destroy it because they are trying to close the bridge, close the roads, and they are trying to make it into a hell for us. And the uh, Mill Road Bridge was one of those places which have fought very hard to keep it open, but unfortunately, at the meeting, they promised something to the other councillors saying, the disabled people, they're going to have two cars so they can use it, any blue badge holders. Then that decision, that phrase went into the county councils where they were trying to make decision. I said, okay, that we managed to get the disabled people going and we're going to vote for closure. But a few days later, the chair for the transport committee said, no, this is not right. We only give one car to one disabled person. It has to be she, had she or he has to be using that car to be able to cross the bridge or use the bridge. So I'm against the congestion charge, I'm against the closures, I'm against the, all these craps that are doing, closing the side roads. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to be frank, because this is crap. They're closing all the side roads. I mean, they are trying to put us all on the ring road, queues every time, long, long queues. It used to take me 20 minutes, it's 45 minutes from Trump into to get to New Road now. What they are doing is not right. We have to stop them. I'm very passionate to stop them, but we can't lose all the councillors. They are not all bad. There are some. We have to find out who is against them, who is not. Let's deal with it. Otherwise, 
the more we continue like this, we are not going to get anywhere because they know the deadline for May election, we can't do much. It's a city council election. We have to get lots of people in from people against it. Then we're going to have county council and general election. They know that but nearly two years to destroy this city because we cannot stop it. They'll keep going and going and going. We have to start taking them. It's like a war now, taking them down. It's not, sorry, the, the, the phrase, but we have to do our best. We cannot let them to destroy our city, and not, not, not most of them live in Cambridge. They all are outside talking about our city, our roads. Sorry, I'm talking too much, but I'm, I'm very passionate about Cambridge. So, if any question, anything, please ask. I will tell openly or talk to you openly about everything. So, I'm going to sit down because there are a few more people. Sorry. Um, okay, so I'm Heather Williams, and I'm a councillor for the Mordens Ward in but I'm also the opposition with the Mordor's Ward, which is probably the furthest point but, um, for South Cambridgeshire. Um, but I'm also leader of the opposition there, and I'm also, and take a deep breath and let me finish when I say this, a member of the Greater Cambridge Partnership Assembly. Okay, which is why I said, yeah, deep breaths. Um, however, when you go through the minutes of the Greater Cambridge uh, Partnership Assembly, you will see it says, one councillor had a contrary view. I would be said one councillor, um, and I am opposed to the introduction of congestion charging. Um, I thought, because you're going to have lots of questions, and we want to take those, uh, and rather than trying to find out where my ward is, because I appreciate that's, that's not going to really get you, uh, get you any answers today, I'd go through some of the questions, the frequently asked questions that I'm asked um, from members of the public. Uh, first of all is when I became aware of the prospect of congestion charging. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people want to know where and when all these proposals came from. Uh, so for myself and colleagues uh, at the district, 2018, that's when I first got elected, um, and it's when the party that I represent first lost control of the district council. Uh, and we had a motion in 2018 against congestion charging because we were fearful that having lost control of the council, we would, there would be a change of direction, um, and we lost that vote on party lines. The reason that that is important, and I think is a trigger point, which I appreciate people in Cambridge City, you know, that's in South Cams, why does that, that matter, is the way that the Greater Cambridge Partnership is actually put together. It's a partnership of three councils, uh, the district, the city, and the county. And each one of those has effectively a veto on proposals as they come forward on the board. So you lose control of a council, that's one less, less veto. So that's carried on and we were told that uh, you need a stick, I believe was the word used. I'm looking at sorry, grounds my deputy there. Um, and that, that really filled alarm bells for us. So we kept going and we put that motion in three or four times um, and always had the same result. We then get to 2021, where my party, although I'm not at the county, that's, that's Steve, they lost control of the county council. Then there was no, to be honest, conservative uh, person on the board at all, and we were the only party that was completely opposed to congestion charging being in, um, implemented. So veto's all gone. And then way and beyond, here we are today. So that's I hope, gives you a picture of the sort of political landscape that, that built up to that. And I, I reference that because I think it's very easy to look at the GCP and see the officers that get propped in front of the councillors. Beyond no illusion, these are political decisions. I've explained the political path that led us to this point. Um, and I think, you know, whoever you choose to vote for, as others have said, you know, Make sure that you know before you vote in May who, who they are, what their views are, but what their party view is as well. And one of the things I'm sure Steve will speak about and we've been talking a lot about is mandates. Who, who said this was okay? Because it wasn't in anyone's party manifestos. Um, and we can see that all the votes on it so far have been party lines. They may not implement a three-line whip, or, you know, we don't have a whip, others do, but it is party line voting. And 
So that's something to bear in, bear in mind when you come into May. Um, I've gone through sort of what I, the, the positions I hold, but actually that, I should explain what that means for you. Um, so yes, I come from a very rural area, um, but when I sit on the Greater Cambridge Partnership Assembly, I am there not to represent my ward. I am there to represent the geographical area of which it covers. And I take that very seriously. Same way as at the district, we make decisions that are for the district as a whole. You're obviously going to serve your residents and you have priorities for your ward. But when you're sat in those meetings, you do need to think about everybody. You shouldn't just be thinking in your siloed area that you geographically come from. So just a bit of reassurance that when I'm sitting in those meetings on the assembly, I am thinking of Cambridge residents just as much as I am residents <coughs> at the furthest points. Um, and I think if everybody felt that way, you know, I've had it in, in the assembly, oh, it's a bit out of your, your patch, do you really want to speak? Um, and I won't give you quite as rough uh, response as I made that day, but yes, because I'm there to do that. So I'm here to listen, um, to help represent you, even though I'm not your direct counsellor on the, on the GCP. Um, and uh, a little anecdote following the vote on Tuesday, which I'm sure Steve will talk on, um, talk on was I was on the, the radio with somebody from the GCP board, and they said about charging, they didn't know when charging was going to happen, which is either very concerning, because um, they're ill-briefed and ill-formed, or really didn't want to answer the question. So I thought I'd give some clarity on that. Uh, large vehicles, 2025. So it, it's very, very, in local government terms, that's quick. Um, most people are very frustrated, myself included, with how slow <coughs> local government can be when you want to get things done. When there's something you don't want, it happens very quickly. Um, and it will start to get rolled out for people on 2026. So there are a few of the frequently asked questions, but really keen to hear from you. And um, yeah, we'll answer the questions to the best of my ability. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming along tonight, our busy night. It's European football on as well with this yeah. so uh, yeah. I know some of you don't want to be here. But um, I, I've travelled 35 miles to be here, so what skin have I got in the game when I live in March in Finland? And none, you might think. I'm Steve Count. I'm the leader of the Conservative group at the County Council, the opposition. Uh, the County Council is run by the Labour, Liberal Democrat and uh, Independent Alliance. And we've been opposing the congestion charge for as long as it's been on the table. But inch by inch, it's moved forward through the GCP to becoming a reality. Um, Kieran Johnson, uh, over there, organised a petition that got 15,600 15, plus signatures to ask for a petition on the referendum. And I supported that because when the consultation went out, I described that as nothing more than a sales document and a glossy marketing campaign. When I say I don't suggest this congestion charge, uh, the one that's being brought forward at the moment, I have to be very careful. I, I have to say I don't su uh, support this congestion charge in its current form. However, uh, should I hear something that I haven't thought of, I could always change my mind. Because the efforts to get me not to be able to vote at County Council have been quite extreme in terms of deciding that I'm predetermined. So it's okay to go on a pro-congestion march. It's okay to be photographed with the leaders there. It's okay to make speeches in favour of, but when I make speeches against, um, the chairman of the council has repeatedly tried to warn me and involve the monitoring officer that I will not be allowed to take part in the vote. I've rejected what I've been told so far. Um, I asked for all the reasons in legal writing, which I've got, and the decision at, at the end of the day will be up to me, but it's been a tough legal battle to get that far. And that's the kind of difficulty that we're getting with officers and members in trying to actually oppose this. It really is immense. On Tuesday of this week at the County Council, sorry, I should just explain, the GCP cannot bring in a congestion charge. Only the County Council can. The decision makers for this are not the three people at the GCP. They put something in front of the County Council and there's 61 members from the County Council de decide. But if they vote along political lines, it will be the same result. 
okay? But it's the county council who are the only ones who have the power to decide on a, count, on a congestion charge. So where was I going with that? So it's been very difficult to actually get some logical and uh, governance opposition to this. On Tuesday of this week, I wanted to take uh, Kieran's petition to council. He took it to council as a petition. I put in a motion that we should actually have a referendum, a local poll of the whole of Cambridgeshire, because people like me didn't, or my residents, didn't really get informed with the consultation. They didn't really have people knocking on their door saying, we're going to have a marketing exercise in your area. They're kind of, you're too far away to matter. It's actually my residents that elect me, that expect me to represent them, that should have a say in what we decide. So I said, well, I'll put a motion in. The first reaction I got was, you cannot. You cannot put in a motion to ask for a referendum because that will mean you are prejudiced when it comes to the actual decision. So that was another legal battle I had to win behind closed doors before I actually sort of got this submitted. It's all documented, it's all in writing, but eventually the monitoring officer said, yes, you can have that. So we had that, and of course the vote was along party lines. But just like the consultation document, sorry, not like the consultation document, what was surprising, like the radio interview that um, uh, Rachel, sorry, <laughs> Heather went to afterwards, what was really surprising was the amount of misinformation that came along in that meeting. So the chair of the Highways Committee, for example, on the subject, subject of congestion charge, said we don't have to have a referendum because there are plenty of elections between now and 2028, yeah. which is the, where the earliest the congestion charge will come in. That is absolutely inaccurate. There's no other way to describe that. One of the, um, the, the deputy chair of the council accused the rest of us of lying when she made statement after statement that was completely inaccurate. It, it, was, it was a terrible day for democracy and it was described by me during the debate as a complete and absolute democratic deficit because nobody in that room who supports the congestion charge, nobody stood for election and said what we want to do is bring in a congestion charge to change the world. Now, we all want a better bus service, we all want better rails, we all want better trams. And we know that the money's got to come from somewhere if we're going to achieve that. We've got to do something a bit better. But when you try and ask people for money, that really hurts them, really painfully hurts them to deliver the benefits that this would bring, you've gone wrong somewhere. <coughs> when people turn up meetings like this, when 16,000 people joining a petition, somewhere on that route to your ideological answers, you went wrong. And that's what I've been trying to tell them. So where do we go from here? I'm looking forward to the questions and answers. I'll do my best on the county council perspective. But where, where do we go from here? <coughs> well, I'll tell you, in after May, the GCP will get the results of the consultation. They'll analyse them. They'll do what they do with them. They'll wash them behind closed doors. And they'll come out with their document that will suggest the way forward. That way forward should, in theory, come to us in, at the County Council in June. I don't think it will. I think it might be delayed as they find that it's quite difficult what they, they pick, but one day it will come in front of us. And I'll tell you what those people voting on it will think. They will be thinking, how did we do in the elections? They will not be thinking, what are the consultation responses? They will not be thinking, how many more petitions are there? They will not be thinking, what happened when I knocked on Mrs. Brown's door? They will be thinking, how safe am I at the next election, and how many did we lose at this one? And that's why I've come over here tonight, because I was accused of actually doing electioneering to influence results. And I said on Tuesday, I'll say tonight, by God, they were right. That's exactly what I'm here to do. Because if it isn't the elections that change, the congestion charge will not change. And I really don't believe in it. So thank you for listening to me and uh, looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Robert Warman and I'm standing for the County Council in Arbury. Uh, I've stood there before and I've, no, I've stopped standing there because I used to lose. But I feel very strongly about this particular issue and I'm very much against it. I used to be a taxi driver. I've also owned a guest house 
and both of those particular things will be hit particularly hard by this. But also, as a business person in my, before I retired, I know how damaging it's going to be to small businesses. And to those people who come into Cambridge who can't afford to live in Cambridge and come and work here. £1,300 a year it's going to cost them to come in. And most businesses won't be able to pay to help them by giving them extra wages. Um, so I started campaigning in Arbury about two months ago. Uh, I managed to persuade the party to give me some leaflets and I went round personally without any help and I delivered 2,500 leaflets so far. And 80% of the people I've spoken to have been against it. And I'm wondering whether the number of people that are standing down this time round is because they've been round on the doors and they don't like what they're hearing. But we've got to win seats in order to persuade the rest of them not to vote for this. Because if they're afraid of losing their seats, then they may, may change their minds. They may say they changed their minds beforehand, but they won't actually have an option if they're told what way to vote. All the candidates, and I'm on the selection committee for the Conservative Party candidates, every single one of them is against the congestion charge in Cambridge. Because we all know, living in Cambridge, what effect it's going to have on our neighbours. I'm particularly interested in pensioners. How are pensioners going to get around to visit their friends? Five pounds every time they go for a visit? I spoke to a group in, in Arbury the other day, all ladies of a certain age. Every single one of them is going to vote for me who lives in Arbury because they're all worried about the effect it's going to have, not only on their ability to go and visit their friends and relatives, but also the cost it's going to be for the, for the shops. I've, I went into Aldi the other day and I asked one of the staff, how many deliveries do you get a day? Two. Two HGVs per day. That's £100 a day it's going to cost them. That's £36,400 a year. And how many supermarkets are there in Cambridge? Well, I've worked it out. And it's going to cost, just for the food, a million pounds a year in congestion charges. Who do you think is going to pay for it? We will. Yes, when we go there. So, remember that when it comes to voting. Thank you. Right, thank you everybody. Um, we didn't want to waffle on for too long, so now we're going to let you guys have your say. So if anyone's got a question or a comment or anything, what we'll do is, if you start the questions, if you can make them general, and then we'll just see who on the panel wants to take them, okay? Gentlemen at the back there, absolutely. Good evening. I'm Kevin Francis. I used to stand for the party in Chester Ward, and I stood for three years, lost every time, due to um, other parties. I've been round the whole of Chesterton in the, since Christmas um, dealing with this as well. You've got 95% of everybody in that ward do not want congestion charge. Quite a lot of them are being told by other parties. I'm against it. I don't want it to happen. I'm being told what to do. They are being told, the councillors that are presently elected are being told what to do when they go to meetings like they did when they went to stop the, uh, the shutting of the bridge. <coughs> yeah, they were told, your views don't count, you follow the party lines. And that's what they are being told to do. I have my son who works for the council, He's been told unofficially when he's going around doing certain things, that's what the councillors are being told to do as well. And there's emails going around their party saying what they must say and do when they go to those. So all I can say is well, that we need to go out there as a party, or if we can't go as the Conservatives, then we need to get... Um, in the newspapers that because I know when it comes to May's election people do not know where to vote 
because they're being told by certain parties, the Conservatives are in charge of the council there, the council there, they're pushing it through with the Great Partnership. You know it as well as I do, they're being told it. Yeah? yeah? So that's what's being told to other parties and what they're saying to the general public. Hello. Um, yeah, so uh, just to be clear as well, for Cambridge City's perspective, in local government, I don't think we're in control of anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to really be open. Um, and, and I would say as well, you know, not everybody's going to have the same political alignments, even, even in the same party. Broad church gets used a lot, doesn't it? Um, people do have different views. I, I think in this election, however you f feel you can vote or not vote is, is really important when it comes to congestion charging. And, and like I said, you've got to look at the manifestos or ask the party, party line on things. We stood in 22 uh, and we put on our literature that we were opposed to congestion charging. We were upfront, honest, and if people wanted congestion charging, and, and let's be honest, there is some, okay, there is some, um, they have the opportunity to vote against us, but we, we put our stall out, we, we said what we were for. It didn't appear in any other party's literature at all, um, and reports have been to us that what gets said is, oh, we couldn't support it in this form, okay? We had the cotton by-election, and that's what was fed back. We couldn't support it in this form. Uh, oh, well, some of us are for it, some of us against it. I think the candidate is against it. And I, I would say this to you, not to incite anything, every councillor is doing what they see is right. Um, but they had a voting history of three times voting against our motion opposing congestion charge. Well, if you can't support a motion opposing it, really, then you must be pro it. But apparently that, that maths didn't add up in that occasion. Um, so you are right on the, on the parties, but you know, there will be other candidates as well. Um, and I think it's, it's very, I feel very sorry for the people that are being, you know, made or, not always made, but, or whipped or however it's happening to not vote with their conscience. But equally, they have to take responsibility for that. You know, we have a mantra in our group. It, it's your family, because your family's important, your residents, the council, your party. And if they truly don't believe that it's the right thing to do, and some have said, you know, all not in this form, we had a vote, they still voted against it, I do have a bit of not very much sympathy for that, because we're elected to represent people. Um, and that's not always, you know, doing as you're told. We are elected to have independent decision making. Um, so please don't um, be fooled by, not in the current form, because what they'll do is they'll move one road, it's not the same. And we saw that with C2C, for anyone that follows that. C2C is Campbell and Cage Busway. Um, we had uh, leaders, the leader of our, our council holding a placard saying stop the busway when they're in opposition. Um, and I, I do believe the Lib Dems voted for it, didn't they? So, yeah, be, be careful what you vote for. So very quickly, and then we're going to take another question. Yeah, just, uh, for, that, for those who uh, watched the debate on Tuesday, there were public questions signed beforehand, and one of the public questions came from a councillor called Dan Lentil. Dan was very, uh, very memorable because he has a beard that sort of splits in the middle down there. He's a very recognisable uh, candidate. He was a Liberal Democrat up until about uh, a month ago. He doesn't support the congestion charge, and. As he said in a very open letter, in a very bruising letter for the Liberal Democrat Party, they were being told what they have to say, he didn't disagree with it, and the only way out of that was for him to resign. Now, he's no friend of ours. He finished his speech with, don't you hand this city over to the damn Tories. <laughs> so I know he's not my friend, but there was an honest honesty about that, of somebody who had to leave his party because of the whip that's being imposed there. And the other second thing I want is just, just to say is that the new line that's appeared is we maybe can't go for this congestion charge in its current form, so we'll have to look at exactly what that means. I can't trust them. If they 
get through something in June over uh, the, once it's left the county council with a charging ability, then what they'll do is they'll start off slightly and they'll increase and increase and they'll end up with what was in front of you, if not worse. So it's a matter of stop it, not just wait to see what the next proposal is. That's my opinion. Thank you. The lady, the lady there wants to come in, then we'll come I down. I just want to mention about the blue badge and the Milro Bridge. She said one car. Well, the blue badge goes with the person and not the car. So what happens if the person hasn't got a car and they've got different people that take them I went to the blue badge yes, and I, I immediately got in touch with the county council and asked about it. And they said, well, we don't have a form yet. <laughs> so if they've only had one application, it's maybe because they don't have the forms ready, or maybe they have now. But that's a very good question, and I don't know the answer for that one. I, I, think, we, I think Sharp will have to yeah, on there. Sure. Sure. Okay. Still. I understand that so we can see. Mm -hmm. So at the meeting, I was there sitting, listening to the chair and what he was saying. And the emphasis mostly was on the blue badge holder, saying if there is a disabled person, how is he going to, he or she going to cross the bridge? And the chair said that we allocated two cars for each person who has the blue badge. And then, and we were happy. We said, okay, they're going to close the bridge. At least those people, they can cross, and then we're going to sort something out. Then next election or what happens, we're going to try to reverse the decision in future. But at the moment, we've lost it, but we've got the blue badge and the taxis and all that. And then people, they ask, okay, is the system is up and running? No, not yet. We're going to have the numbers and the forms, application being ready in due course. Then a few days of what it was, I heard that the chair said, no, it's not two cars. There is only one car which is registered to that person, and he or she has to be inside that car. That means exactly. So that means they, de they deceived the people who were there at that point because they managed to get it going. Because some of the county councils were the objection. The way they voted was, we want this to go through. So, so, to take the vote, sorry. Yeah, it was the clear. It was misleading. It was misleading. Chair, then clearly misled. But we complain and we haven't got anywhere, so we should be. Okay, anyway, yes. So, so on, on, on misleading. So uh, if, if a vote goes a long way, the only solution, real solution afterwards, is a judicial review, which will take up on the £10,000. Um, and a judicial review will just say whether things went correctly or not and doesn't often open a turn of decision. So yes, people are misinformed. Often a politician will say, well, I might have got my facts wrong, I didn't mean to, or I might have got it wrong. But it's exactly the same facts came across in the congestion charge. People are told that um, they, they, they will be allowed to register two vehicles, so these vehicles will be things maybe they don't own, but regular things that pick them up or something like that. So put the number of plates in. Um, and they were told at the county council that they would be able to use those cars. But it turns out, first of all, that it's only if they're in them, all right, that, that was not picked up. And of course, if they are picked up by multiple different people, they can't use that. So there's a lot of misinformation going on, but it doesn't change the decision unless somebody puts their hands in the pocket, goes for a judicial review, and that's a pretty long shot. So it's better to, 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 to air these inaccuracies as early as possible and get them out there so that when we get Can to I June... Can I as a person who then use some sort of complaints process yes through the councils, so yes. as a, perhaps the ombudsman, to yes. say, actually, look, that is just totally wrong. Yeah. Because have, if they have the wrong information to formulate the vote, how can it validate the vote? Surely the vote has to happen again. Yeah. So that surely is a congestion of people is incredibly crap. I'm looking at it, but, you know, it's a law and then, you know, it's a list of winning at it. But. Yeah. So, so there is a complaints procedure at the county council, and I'm sure it is at all the councils. Um, a result, and result of that will probably be the damage to the individual that the ombudsman settles on. So you didn't manage to get over the bridge, so you will be compensated and the county council have to pay for that. It's very unlikely that they would look at the decision or reverse it. People don't often mislead 
deliberately. They don't. They misunderstand things and missay things. I'm not going to sit here and accuse no matter which political party, but I know any county council that regularly deceives people. But I would say that the way that people inter interpret facts and data the way they wish to, they see what they want to see and miss the rest. It happens a lot. It did look like, because I watched that, and it did look like, like it was, you know, yes, let's just getting so excited, let's just get it through all we're going to. I mean, that's what it looked like to anybody he was, watching. He was, he was looking at the oncoming of his cash cow, and he was very excited. Yeah, that is exactly. And he's <laughs> got a relationship with Rachel, and it's like, we're going to do it with yeah. two, that's a good story. Um, if there was enough people, for instance, who then used the complaint process, that actually, we were misled. And that we are the consequences as such, we are going to be um, feeling the consequence of that. Then, if an onslaught goes through to the, um, the complaints process and up to the ombudsman, that surely is going to send a message as well. It's good thinking, Lloyd and Sack will have to think about yeah, that. We're just going back up to the floor. Are there any other questions in the audience at this point? Um, yes, we'll take them there. Um, just a straightforward question How much government pressure is being exerted? Government pressure. In, for, for the nationals. Or on us. I'll say that because it, it, it's a great question. Because when a few months ago, there was, um, uh, must be six or nine months ago, the mayor, the Labour mayor, the, the new one, the Combined Authority, he failed to get bus funding when every other combined authority mayor in the country got some bus funding. And there was a long letter that went from the, um, from the Department of Transport to him, and it basically described it as a lack of ambition. All right. At the meeting of the combined authority, when this was uh, discussed, the officers said that in their private meetings with the DFP <coughs> officials, they were told that the um, um, bus funding wouldn't come through because there was no appetite for congestion charge, or they weren't sufficiently progressed for that. And that was revealed, that was said to the Combined Authority Board in a public meeting, making it sound like there's a lot of government pressure for it. This has been investigated thoroughly and claims to be wrong, and it actually got an answer from Anthony Brown, from the Transport Minister in the House of Commons. Those comments were never made. That did not happen. There has never been any pressure. The Combined Authority Board was misled and there has never been any pressure for a congestion charge from the Conservative Government on this area. But what we have got is a, a GCP authority that have seen this as the solution from the very day they got formed. They have been aiming like an Exocet missile to get to an ideological belief. And that is one of the unfortunate uh, misconceptions that has now been put to rest, but there was a lot of publicity about it. It's definitely not, not true. So if I may, yeah. if, can I? Yeah, of course. We've cleared that up. Um, what is the Conservative position if you get into a position whereby you can influence any results? In other words, one step for, further forward. You've got a bit of power. What is your so solution? Like the congestion charge straight away. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. You're going to do away with the congestion charge, but what are you going to put in its place? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm hogging this. I'm not my apologies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so the, the mayor gets £50 million pounds a year, and the... Sorry, I've got my figures wrong here. The mayor gets £40 million pound a year, and the combined of uh, GCP... GP gets £40 million a year, Mayor gets £30 million a year. That was supposed to deliver improvements to the public transport. £70 million pounds a year. Both of the, the GCP's been going for about eight years now. What have you seen for that? The Mayor's been going for uh, six years. What have you seen for that? I'm sick and tired of money being spent on consultation, on drawing plans that are not actually delivering. We've got some great cycle paths, particularly in the south of the country, being delivered but very, very little else. You know, before my time, one of the good things in this area, before my time, the Conservatives before me, built the guided busway from St. Ives to um, Cambridge. Very successful, five million pa passengers a year. The right product in the right place at the right time. 
but not just to keep spending money on a big merry-go-round while you pursue something that's actually beyond your reach, because the public have turned on them. It is beyond their reach. So, so you haven't answered the question. <laughs> so, so I would take some of that, so first of all, I would take some of that money for bus, bus subsidies at this present point in time to actually re-energise routes that are failing. So people don't get on buses because they're not regular and they take too long, but it's been left to the commercial market. Now, there's enough money in the pot now because the GCP wants to put in £30 million pounds a year, which they've been saving, from next year. If they were putting £10 million pounds a year from that from the start into areas that stood a chance of getting cars off the road, we'd actually have some better bus services because people found they were reliable and using them. So I'd, I'd be delivering improvements today, not looking for grand schemes in the future, and actually building up patronage on bus services that work. Uh, that's just part of it. I've got a lot more. Oh, there we go. We've got a question from Desi Yeah. Sorry, I'll just get the front. Sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, so maybe Desi Yes, yeah, my name is Delokhsen. Yeah, I am in the small trader. Um, I'm professionally the taxi driver. And I am standing for King Jesus Award as a conservative candidate. I am fight with my poor area, because I am poor man. So this area people have unfortunate all the way, because they are transport, uh, the locality of housing, and they cannot afford this context. So which one is coming? So, and my main reason to uh, come here today, so we, all the congestion centers or everything the plan for clean air, that's the reason. So yes, I am supporting this one, and I have a electric vehicle taxi. So I am the first step I go in for it. But how the people who was sitting down there, like a GCP or county council, they make a very narrow mind, narrow plan. They closes all the connecting road. This is 11 of them road. You cannot tell the road name because I know because I am on the road eight to ten hours a day. So 11. Connecting road close, so all this connecting road, like a story is who will be there? <coughs> Nightingale Avenue, who will be there? And uh, Sydney Taylor Road, who will be there? All the rich people live in there, so no one can pass this road, make a pollution. So all the rich people road is closed, and all the poor people are in the main road and running, keeping the engine down on all the day and waiting for taxi or for their own car. They are making more pollution and they are paying more money on the petrol and they are not getting what's the principle of the money for clean air grant which is on government spending billions. Okay, I am telling one example for one council, Sheffield. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll yes, yes. So yeah, yeah, that's a grant for comes improving all the public transport, like a taxi and transport goods. So the, the air quality fund comes for this. They are paying money to change their vehicle, make the air quality better. Not the closer all the road and make all the people in this same lane. And the two lane to make it one lane and want to show all the people. We all agree. We all agree. We know all of this. We yes. all agree with you. Yes, yeah, so we can. Yeah, I need to ask them. So, where. We're going to be involved the question. Yes, yeah, so now we're together. So, where is our country? You sit down there, we're going to be involved in the question. Right, so, gentlemen, if you live in town and you go want to go out, the daily charge is a pound, or how many goes can you get for a pound? That's fine. So we can get a congestion charge for a bus. Congestion charge. Yeah. So if you if you go, this is this is the absurdity of the situation. Is that people across Cambridgeshire are going to be whacked really hard by this tax, and there are lots and lots of people across the county who have to pay to come in for work. But we all know that post COVID, we see an increase in working from home, and there are people further out who will feel it but who will not feel it as badly as people in this city will feel it. If you, like me, I commute to work to the North City, I'm a teacher in a public school in the North City, I will honestly have to pay £1,300 more a year 
Because that is the cost of me going to work every day, five days a week. Exactly. People are going to be shut inside their homes. Exactly. People are going to be shut inside their homes. Young people are going to have their social opportunities cut away from them. I'm sorry, I was speaking to a lot of residents in Jerry Hinton, and a lot of them are saying, you go out to the bus stops on Jerry Hinton Road at night, who's going to let their teenage child get off there with no lighting, for example, on the wreck? It's going to be a real hazard for young families who want to give people flexibility. The reality is that this congestion charge by its hardest in Cambridge City, where we're going to be charged £5 every time we leave our homes. That is immoral. It's going to force people, as I was speaking to one woman on the doors just the other day, who said quite rightly, it's going to force people into shopping outside of the hours of the charge, which is going to force the congestion into different times of the day. So we're all going to be down at the supermarket at 8 pm which isn't going to help anything, is it, let's be honest. The reality is that this charge <coughs> is going to be particularly devastating for our city, and that's why we can't afford to have business as usual. We can't afford to have the same people in power after 4th of May, because that's how we end up there. Are there any other questions? Yes, the lady here. Hi, actually I've got two questions, very quickly. Um, one is, why was Mill Road Bridge shut? What was the actual reason? Because I don't know. And two, do, do you actually believe there is a congestion problem in Cambridge? So, the reason Middle Road Bridge was shut is because there is only one person behind this, which we have come across. There is one person name. I don't want to take the person name, but everybody knows who I'm talking about. That's the main person. That's his reason. Reason given? So, there is no reason given to us. He said because there is too much traffic on the road and he wants to make up for walking, cycling. But he didn't realise that the crime has increased when it was shut. My wife was, I used to live in Romsey, my wife was scared to walk on the road because after six o'clock is dead, it's more dangerous to walk in there because people, my, I'm in a real estate, so people, my, my few of my tenants was robbed on a knife point. It's really dark. The drug users are increasing in the area. We put that in the front of him. He said, nothing you don't want, you don't want to put the cameras, you don't want to do anything else, what he's wanted. What he gave me the answer was, the reason I want to share it because my granddaughter loved it. <laughs> when I walk, cycle from there, and it's really lovely now. She said, I'm grand, I'm really happy. There's no cars on the road. But I didn't realize how many people pockets are hit by this. We're right. losing this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, other question, I'll be asking if you guys as much as possible. Just the gentleman there, and then we'll go to the gentleman here. Yeah. It's pretty much aimed at, at you. Yeah. Living yeah. in Cherry Hinton, we've got three entrenched Labour guys that have been around since I don't know when, probably the ARC. Um, <laughs> and, and I was just wondering what your response is because they came out very early after the first meeting on Parker's Peace to say that they were actually against this. Now, two of you guys have said that it's going to be a, a whip from the party, whereas they have come out openly and said that they're against it. I mean, what are your views on so that? So, my, my responsibility, I don't want to denigrate my opponents, but what I would say is that words at the end of the day cost nothing. We, we know for a fact that that the councillor who had a statement read out Parker's piece wasn't there to deliver his statement in person because the whips told him he couldn't be there to speak from the phone. I can promise you right now that, well, let's be honest, if we do get some councillors in May, there's probably not going to be a particularly large Conservative group, but if by some miracle anyone told me to do anything other than shout from the rooftops that we've got to stop this charge, I would resign from that party and continue to serve as an anti congestion charge independent. We can't have people who are just saying, oh, I don't like it, I'm, I'm against it, but then doing absolutely nothing to show that they actually oppose it. For example, those councillors could already have called a vote of confidence in the Labour rep on the end, GCP, and we all know who he is, and said that if that doesn't happen, we'll call a vote of confidence in the Labour leadership of the council. They haven't done anything like that, which would have been the first thing they could have done. Just on Tuesday, the Labour councillor for this ward voted, as Steve knows, to oppose a referendum which we've given you guys to say on that issue. So I'm sorry, I don't believe a single councillor who says they're against this until we start seeing them voting and doing things, which is what actually matters in my opinion. And if they do do that, fair play to them and we'll reconsider. But until they actually take action, words cost very little in my experience. Are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, sorry, I said the gentleman that we were talking about. Okay, yeah, what about? Thank you. Okay, well, uh, I'm going back to the good bag. 
And on the day I was there in Alkenbury, when they had no one close to me on the bridge, and it really concerned me when I come away. I don't like saying this because Jerry Bird got a lot of stick when she agreed to keep it open. But on the day, she gave lots of good reasons why it should stay open, but then at the end of the day, she voted to close it. Now that concerned me because she's not a blue badge. So is that not a conflict of interest? Um, so I would say, on, um, uh, we should say when it comes to councillors and processes, um, there are com complex processes you can go down um, and rules, but essentially you're still elected okay, at the end of the day and just covering on what was there. So we could be, if we did something incorrect which we didn't know, the, the worst action that we take from us really is we're, we're asked to apologise. Um, so there may have been a conflict of interest as long as it was declared. Again, to to go against that, you would need some sort of a JR, for example. But there are also dispensations. For example, um, we all vote on council tax. We're all living in the area, so there is a dispensation given to us. Otherwise, we'd never be able to vote on, on those matters. So there may have been something similar to that. But what I would, would stress very much is that um, from the GCP, um, Blue badges were dis uh, discussed at length, and there was a lots and lots of exemptions. But to actually implement those requires an awful lot of time, management, and the reality is, it requires a lot of people to be able to go online, which not everybody yeah. can. You know, the processes and the way that it's, how do you communicate it? How do people know? You know there are, people will end up worse off whatever exemption should be in place. And also, not every disability enables you to have a blue badge. It does feel, from my, my perspective, when I sit in these meetings, we've done something for blue badge holders, that's tick. So no one, no one can come at us because we, we can't, you know, we've got that. Now my, my granddad, into his 90s, um, late 90s, he's 99 now, um, I think, or well, I might have just added a year on him, I don't think I have. Um, he has never qualified for a blue badge. Never. But would you expect a 90 year old, year old man or, or woman to walk the distance from the furthest point away um, or walk long routes or get on different buses? You, you wouldn't. You know. And there are people with disabilities out there that don't qualify. So I would suggest that we try and get away from the blue badge debate and make it about disability and accessibility because there are plenty of people that don't qualify for blue badges but for reasons out of their control and I spoke of myself as um, my, my daughter and the fact that Adenbrook's being included. My daughter's premature. I had daily, from 20 weeks pregnant, daily visits to Adenbrook's. Now, and when, you're, when your child is in hospital, you don't get to stay with them when they're in the queue. You do if you've been discharged and come back. But if you have a premature birth, you are not allowed to stay with your baby. You have to leave them. And so that means parents like myself, who wouldn't qualify in any of those cases, going paying to see their child. Now, I've, I'm lucky I could afford that. But there's plenty of people out there that wouldn't. And uh, well, then we were told, well, we, we could look at a reimbursement. Well, you've still got to have the money in the first place to pay for it, to then claim it back. So I would say these are important issues, but don't fall into the trap that somehow these make it acceptable. It's really not. It does not make the city or the hospital um, accessible. Sorry. The most important thing is I'm going to stand up because I'm not going to at all the meetings are attended, the two, at the, all the meetings are attended, there were two important parties, Campsite and Mill Road for people, when they were making decisions for Mill Road Bridge. And uh, at the first meeting, when the Jerry Bird went with us to keep the bridge open, she got a lot of abuse from the Mill Road for people, and Campsite, if she was sitting there, I saw that lady from Mill Road people went to her, how dare you, water, water, man. So she got a lot of abuse from them the first time round. Second time round, when she went with them, she was a lovely, lovely. She, they all went to her, because I went to her and said to Jerry, Jerry, we love you, whatever decision you made, we respect your decision. You decided to close the bridge, 
uh, we don't care. Let's work together. Let's see what we can do. But we have to stop these sort of associations. We can't say, okay, for a million people, 2,005, no, 1,700 members and 750 members deciding on Cambridge, what to do with Cambridge, all these cycles, all these things. When it started to rain or snow, I couldn't see <coughs> even one cyclist on the cycling because it wasn't even cleaned up for them to cycle. And they all were trying to be on the main road to cycle because they couldn't cycle, it wasn't safe for them. I think the best thing we can do is we lost the battle, both of them. We have to get in. May election, we just want to get in as many as possible because we can't do anything else. With the law, with the legal, we are not going to get anywhere. We have to change them. One by one, we have to get them, replace them with the people <coughs> which are good enough to get us going. And the next time round for the county election, for the general election, we need lots of county councillors in our favour. At the moment, I'm conservative, I'm practically conservative, because I'm fighting for the right of people, which I know is the best thing to do. But we don't have the majority. We can't do much about it. And we have to get in, and we have to ask many people we can. This may election is a city council, and it's not going to do much. But it will show the next time round, oh, we lost why. Let's see what we can do. Take one more question. Can I follow on your remark and just ask people here, are there any people here tonight who normally would vote, have voted Labour, but who came tonight because the congestion charge is making you rethink? Anybody? Really? How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, hey, a lot. Um, there are any other questions in the audience? Yes, Walker, and then we're going to see you. The whole problem, I, I, I spent 10 years working for an organization called CAP, I don't know what the name of you uh, which is a, a, an organization that helps elderly people. Uh, and as I see it, the biggest problem of all about Mill Road Bridge is only those people who live in Cambridge will know mm. that you can get across it if you put your car number down. What about all the visitors? They won't know, so they won't be able to go over it. So only a limited number of people are going to be able to use this facility at all. I'm just going to see, and then we're going to wrap up, I think. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to uh, pretty much address those Labour supporters, or traditional Labour supporters, that put their hand up, or didn't, uh, and the same goes to Liberal Democrats. You may be completely anti-Tory and surprised to find yourself in the, this room tonight actually thinking I agree with some of the things that they said. That they said. But generally speaking, I'm a, if I was in your shoes, I'm a Labour supporter, I'm a Liberal Democrat supporter, I don't like Tories. Are you saying enough to convince me to vote for you and will that change the world? Well, the point about will it change the world, not Cambridge City, it will not. Because Cambridge City, one third are going out in this election. So if by some miracle every single seat goes Conservatives, the Labour and Liberal Democrats are still in charge. If they still want the congestion charge, they can do it. If they still want to shut your roads, they can do it. If they still want to do all the things, they can do it. You are not putting at risk Cambridge City going Conservative in this election. So I'm throwing that out there to try and help convince you this would be like when people have a protest vote against national government, I'm sure some people will be in the local elections this time having a protest vote against the Conservatives. But this is your chance to have a protest vote against Labour and Liberal who are driving the congestion charge and not put at risk all the other things that you believe that Labour and Liberal are good at. Because the Conservatives will not be in charge after the elections at the City Council because only one third of the seats are up for grabs. Okay. So I just thought that was an important mathematical diversion for you all. So, uh, right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say, so, uh, just just to say that everyone who's asked the question now, just, just hold on, hold on a minute. Just, just, okay. just, just bang on. Well, here, one more thing from you. Then we are, You're talking about Cambridge City. Yes. Cambridge City has got nothing to do with the vote, with the decision on congestion charge. It's the con co county council. If I, if I may explain that, then. Okay. I may explain. 
so, so the, it's to do with parties, and it's the same parties at the county council, Labour, Liberal, Independence Rule, the county council, Labour, Liberal, Rule, the city council. They all talk together, they all look at the results, they all work together. The city councillors cannot influence the decision of the county council. You're absolutely right on that. But believe me, the Labour and Liberal county councillors will be looking at the city election results and that will be telling them what their likely outcome is in a couple of years' time and that will affect the vote. But you are completely right, they will not be voting on the congestion charge. City council won't. Okay. So we are. Yeah, and that's that's that yeah. 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 Bear in mind that the Kent, what I was saying earlier about how the GCP is formed, it's a partnership of three councils, and one of them is Cambridge City Council. So they will have a vote in June at the GCP, and if they could use that veto that I was talking about earlier, and if they see enough political support going away from them. Okay, and I appreciate that's, that will be in various directions. That will influence decision. Or they'll do it anyway, no matter what you think. At least you'll know where you are. But they do have a say at the City Council. And so when people are knocking on your doors, don't, don't let them off with that. They send, as a group, their representative to the GCP board. And it's up to them if they use their veto or not. They could do that in June. If one of those three pulls out, it doesn't doesn't carry on as far as the county council. And I think that's because of the way it's formed, that's, I know that's difficult and it's very local government tiered, but it's important to remember. Sorry, thank you. No, we are going to wrap up there, guys, just because of the leadership of the room higher to, to, to navigate, okay? Thank you so much for coming. If you want to hang around for the next sort of five, ten minutes as we pack away and talk to us or anyone else here, please feel free. Uh, if anyone would like to, I think a few of us are going to head over to the pub across the road if anyone wants to continue the conversations there afterwards. But otherwise, thank you very much for coming. Thank you all.